Hey guys, discipleship starts at home. One of the greatest joys I have in this life, after my salvation, is being married to the perfect God-chosen woman for me. Corey is strong-willed and has a work ethic that exceeds my own, and she's created beyond compare. Uh, she's a good friend to others, my best friend, and an excellent mother. Above all, she's a faithful Christian. After Corey, my next biggest joy is our little boy, Eli. He's awesome. Currently seven years old, he's a chatty Cathy, a sensitive soul with a, a baby giant's physique. He's uh, super active, and he plays, pretends, and imagines a lot. A big superhero fan, a Star Wars nut, and just a kid that loves babies. When the weekend arrives, I always have work to do, and I could easily spend 14 hours or more each day in the shop working on vinyl or guns or something else to supplement our family's income. The, this is important, a lesson that my son needs to know. But at the young age of five, he was taught that if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat, 2 Thessalonians 3.10. There are plenty of other lessons that I could be teaching him too. Personally, I believe the most important one is that he's valued and that he's loved. Those are fairly easy to do for me. What is a bit harder is forsaking work in order to show him that he's more important to me than anything besides God and his mother. Over the 48 hours on Saturday and Sunday, I could have worked 24 of them very easily. All of this would have proven to my son, all this would have proven to my son is that he's less important to me than money. And if I actually enjoyed what I was working on, he would quickly decide that I'd also rather have fun without him. This is not the way to train a boy into a man deserving of a good wife, like Corey is. He would not learn how to be a good father from me, and if it came from someone else's interpretation of scripture and their influence, that would be the best case. Anything else could go south very quickly. Kids will always find a father figure somewhere. I believe that one possible it should be their actual father, and that they should be obedient to their heavenly father to set the example. There are times when I absolutely had to work. On those occasions, I can have Eli help. Inevitably, this sh slows me way down. It's, it's not rapid progress. But the trade-off is that work does get accomplished, even if it's at a slower rate. The boy gets a chance to earn some money for his help, and my wife doesn't feel like I'm abandoning, abandoning him for her to watch so that I can play. Here's what'll happen instead, and has been happening. Rather than unintentionally proving to my wife and son how little they mean to me, I do my best to be present when we are together. If I have work to do, I can stay up late after they go to bed. If I need to write, I try to do it when my divided attention will not annoy them. There are still obligations to be met, though. On Saturdays, Eli and I help clean our church building. On Sundays, we go to church as a family and sometimes have a small group in our home, you know, a Bible study. Often our Saturdays will also include a grocery store trip. So right there we have roughly seven hours where I can spend time with Eli and sometimes with Corey too. That's just while doing work. This doesn't count our Friday family nights or Saturday and Sunday afternoons. My family should not feel abandoned to my work ethic or my desires to advance in life, and I don't believe that they do. I cannot possibly provide them with an effective example of what a husband and father are supposed to be, look, and act like if I'm never around them. So, I make an effort, and I choose to be around them. Work, side hustles, or hobbies cannot put them in a back seat. Sometimes living this out feels like a sacrifice, and sometimes it is. I believe it to be the right thing to do, though, regardless of my feelings on the matter at any particular moment in time. Before even my family, though, Christ has to be first. Without him, there's no redemption for me, no rational basis for my moral code, and certainly no benefit to being a good parent other than to stoke the fires of my own ego. Discipleship means learning and living like Christ while teaching others how to also. It's best that I do that first and foremost with my closest, most willing audience, my family. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it, says Proverbs 22.6. Maybe your children are grown. Perhaps you are single. Still, you have a circle of people that you can influence with your presence. I urge you to take my words to heart and to lead by being the best example of Christ on earth that you can be. Will you honor his sacrifice by doing that? Thanks.